What's good? What's good, party people? Welcome to Candid Conversations. I am Candia Johnson, a woman on a mission to help you show up and speak up anyway, despite dealing with fear, uncertainty, or self-doubt. So earlier today, I was talking to one of my mentees, and she's going through a difficult time. She lost her job. She's going through some things with her family. And I said, you know what? I got to share these tips and advice about how to show up when you just don't feel like it with my candid conversation peeps. And although this is the theme of the show, speaking up and showing up, I wanted to get granular today. I wanted to get detailed on what to do every day before you have to show up in the world at work, (laughs) around people, what to do during midday when that mood hits, or what to do at the end of the day when the mood hits, or shifts, I should say. I find it so funny, though, that when we want to lose weight or get rid of, you know, the 10 to 20 extra pounds you probably put on over the winter or during quarantine, like me, (laughs) you could find a weight loss coach, a trainer, a friend, a Facebook group filled with people who will tell you the exercises you need to do daily to lose that 10 to 20 pounds. They're going to tell you how many calories you should probably eat every single day to lose those 10 to 20 pounds. They're going to tell you what foods and what drinks, right? All these sorts of things that you could do to get rid of those extra 10 to 20 pounds. But how do you get rid of the negative and limiting thoughts you have around your potential or even around a a difficult or challenging situation that you are facing at home or even in your business? See, the same way the weight, the 20 pounds or 10 pounds is making you move slower is the same way your limiting thoughts and beliefs or your assumptions are making you move slower in life. So what does it mean when people say you've got to train your mind to be stronger than your emotions or you're going to lose every time? I see that quote a lot on Instagram. What does that mean? What does that look like every single day? That's what we're talking about today. For me, Just like exercising and eating properly to lose weight, you need to exercise and monitor what you put in your mind, your body, and your spirit to get rid of those negative and limiting thoughts as it relates to whatever is going on. You ever start exercising though, right? Well, you ever start, you ever drag yourself to the gym or you drag yourself to go walking in the morning. You're like, I don't feel like it but I'm just going to do it just even a little bit. Once you start to walk just a little bit, once you get to that gym, start to lift a little weight, or maybe you're doing cardio. Once you start to just put yourself in the mix, you push yourself, you begin to say, Oh, you know what? I feel a little bit better afterward. I'm glad I did this. This is the, the exact same thing that I want you to, the, the exact same process that I want you to adopt. And for me, it's all about creating and having access to self-care. And I'm over this word self-care, but we're going to rock with it today because I got my more on one. Okay. I'm on an energy, but it's about accessing your self-care toolbox. So you can learn how to practice daily exercises to shift your mindset and uplift your mood. And sometimes it's not even about shifting from a negative to a positive. Sometimes it's simply about learning how to shift from negative to peace, (laughs) to finding peace in the moment. You ain't always got to find the fun or positive thing, but you do need to learn how to be at peace with the moment. But before we go into some of my favorite exercises, here's what I want you to understand. Everybody has their day. Today may be your day. Tomorrow might be my day. Sometimes you have to allow yourself to feel the way you're going to feel. All feelings matter. At the same time, recognize this. Your feelings aren't facts. So I always tell people, let the waves hit the beach. And what that means is, just like when you are standing on the beach and you see this ginormous wave, right? Come on, come with me. Come with me to the beach, y'all. You're standing on the shore of the beach and you see this ginormous wave. And then you sit there like a kid and wait for another big, huge ass wave to come in and it takes some time. That's you. Some days you are going to feel all the way up 
And then some days you may be all the way down. The key thing I want you to understand is that you have to have patience with yourself. I want you to understand when you've created your own toolbox of exercises and strategies you can access every single day, that you're essentially training your mind to get back up. You're training your mind to separate feelings from facts. Okay? But here's the thing, too. I want you to embrace this warrior spirit as well. Because what if the storm doesn't pass? What if whatever you're feeling, whatever you're growing through, because I'm very intentional with that word growing through. I don't say going. I believe any and everything that you experience in life, you're growing through it. Okay? So what if whatever you're feeling, whatever you're growing through at the moment, it doesn't pass? Sometimes the reality is you're going to have to learn how to sit in it and still show up. Maybe you have to sit in that storm for six days or even six months. Now, here's the thing. You may not be able to choose what is happening to you at the moment, but you can always choose how you respond. I know y'all heard that before. Sometimes, and let me be clear, sometimes no response is the best response. You have that power to choose. I want you to get in the best habit every single day of choosing power versus lack of power. I want you to learn how to embrace your spirit of being a warrior instead of a warrior of things you cannot control. So let's talk about what it means to embrace this warrior spirit. Being a warrior doesn't even mean you have to win. (laughs) It simply means you're doing your best. Your best is temporary. Your best may change from moment to moment. It means you are not going down without a fight. So for me, being a warrior every day, not going down without a fight, not going down, succumbing to my emotions or assumptions or even my feelings, it means that I simply have the power to pause and choose different. I simply have the power to tap into my toolbox of activities and exercises and routines Now, my exercises and routines are rooted in the five senses, okay? So we know, or we should know, the five senses being hearing, sight, taste, smell, touch, right? And one of those activities, or maybe a combination of them, are key to getting my mind right so I can show up when I don't feel like it. A self-care or get your mind right toolbox, whatever you want to call it. It should be simple and within your reach every single day. During my episode with emotional intelligence educator Tico Najan, that was an amazing episode. It was one of my top podcast episodes for 2020. But she said self-care isn't something we should escape to. It's something that we should do every single day. And that's so very true. Now, of course, if you can catch flights, not feelings, that's okay. But let me tell you something. You can't run from yourself, baby. No matter where you go, no matter where you stay, no matter where you lay, you cannot run from yourself. Ask me how I know. I've traveled to South Africa, Italy, Spain, (laughs) all in search of feeling better about life and situations and certain people. And guess what? Time and time again, it provided a temporary relief for permanent feelings and emotions. I got off the plane and returned home to the same damn feelings. I paid about $4,000 trying to escape. So listen, I've been around the world. And I, 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 I can't find my baby. I don't know when, I don't know why. Okay, y'all, I'm I'm going off topic. Y'all don't remember that song by Lisa Stansfield? (laughs) I'm dating myself. If you don't remember that song, then I need you to take a trip down to the YouTube circa 1989 and get your life. So anywho... My point is, you have to learn how to deal with your feelings and emotions day in and day out. You ever take a vacation and you return to work the next after your vacation? And the first part of the day, you're like, okay, I needed that vacation. I'm still on cloud nine. It's cool. Then by four o'clock or five o'clock, you're like, wait a minute. These people still on the same BS. I can't take it. 
You ever take a break from a relationship? Y'all get back together the first week is like the honeymoon, right? Then a few days later, you say to yourself, this is still a clown. <laughs> I don't even like him or her. My point is, you can't run. You got to sit in it. You have to tap into your toolbox to figure out how to manage, how to transform your feelings, your emotions, your assumptions of everyday life. Evolving takes time and tools, just like weight loss. Okay? You can't go to the gym once and the next thing you know, you're home like, okay, I know I could fit into that size eight or 10 now. No, it takes time. Okay. So let's get into Candia's self-care toolbox. So on any given day, people, I may tap into, like I said, one or three of these things. It just depends. So I'm going to share some of my favorite techniques that I share with my clients. In fact, in my career confidence program, we have a whole framework that I recommend you do either once a week or sometimes you could do it every single day. Okay, so we're going to talk about that. So the number one thing for me, right, is that I know sometimes my feelings, they start to brew up in my chest about the night before. And then the morning I feel them intensely. And so one, I have about four books that are timeless for me. And I read them when I feel out of alignment or when I feel stuck or not good enough and I just, this mood, I can't shake it. And I pick one of them up. And so one of the books is The Four Agreements. The other book is The Power of Now. The third book is The Untethered Soul. I have that one on Audible. So I listen to that book often. And the fourth book is Acts of Faith by Ian Levanzan. And I'm going to link them in the show notes. I brought the recent Acts of Faith because it was her 25th anniversary recently. And uh, she actually did Acts of Faith over, okay? Or she she didn't do it over. She didn't do it over. She included some additional kind of reflection. So there's some reflection questioning in the book. There are quotes day to day. So it's dated. And so I purchased it again. I believe it was in 2019 or 2020 or something like that. And I keep those books handy, and I've marked them up like crazy. So sometimes it's just a matter of me flipping to the page so I can get my mind <laughs> right. So the four agreements, I love the four agreements because it reminds me to keep things simple. The four agreements reminds me to, the first agreement, don't take anything personally, don't make assumptions, always do my best and to be impeccable with my word. And so I revisit those four agreements and it helps me just tremendously keep things simple. And it also helps me to just check my assumptions that I'm making, okay? The Power of Now, that book by Eckhart Tolle has truly been transformative for me. And I talked about this on this podcast before because it taught me how to be present in the moment so that I could make the best decision. So one of the affirmations that I tell myself, and I created this affirmation based on the power of now, but I'm making the best decision with the information, resources, and things that I have access to right now. Any other information that I receive after the fact is irrelevant. Untethered Soul has taught me how to get rid of or get a handle of my inner roommate. So the inner roommate is the voice in your head (laughs) that causes chaos, that often tells you you're not good enough, that talks a bunch of assumptions and all those sorts of things. And so for me, I've become comfortable with the fact, and even more so, really from the from Untethered Soul and the Power of Now, of understanding, I embrace the fact now that I am not my thoughts. Okay? And those two books have really helped me to understand that I am not my thoughts and I could choose better thoughts that serve me. Okay? Iyanla Van Zandt's Acts of Faith, it's a daily journal of quotes. So you can flip any single day of the year and it's going to give you a message and some questions that you should ask yourself. And so for me, I usually grab one of these four books. Sometimes I grab two of them and I read them in the morning 
and it, I literally feel my spirit or my energy wavering in the morning for some reason, and it, it uplifts me just a bit, okay? When I know I'm about to take a left turn, when I know I want to go right, <laughs> I tap into one of my favorite reads. Now, the second thing that I like to do is a brain dump. My clients know I'm going to tell you to brain dump your thoughts and let's attack them on our weekly call or bi-weekly call, whatever we meet. And we go through, even as a group, the show up anyway framework. Okay. So the show up anyway framework is a five step process. Pause, breathe, question, reframe, and then decide. Because often we get ourselves into trouble because we think something and then we decide that it's true. And so this process of simply letting your mind just go free with writing down every single negative or limiting or fear that you have on paper. See, once you put it on paper, you can control it, right? You can say, okay, wait a minute. This thought is not serving me. Let's see how we can transform it. Let's see how we can replace that thought. Again, I always say this, the problem isn't that you have these bad or negative thoughts. The problem is you're letting them run around in your head like a two-year-old unattended. And we all know what happens when you let a two-year-old run free in your household. They wreak havoc. My nephew put a whole roll of toilet tissue in the toilet the other day. He decorated the entire bathroom with toilet tissue. And guess what? We couldn't get mad because <laughs> we let him run free. So this is what happens when you let these negative thoughts run free in your head, they wreak havoc and cause chaos and cause you to feel down. So doing a brain dump can help you embrace your power of pause to challenge and change the story that you are telling yourself, to ask yourself a series of questions. At the very least, is this thought hurting me or helping me? Is it serving me or hurting me? If you know deep down in your heart that this question, this situation, you can't get rid of, you keep pondering over it, pondering over the situation over and over again, you have to figure out, is this within my control or is it, without my, is it out of my control? And here's the thing. Again, I don't want you to learn how to replace it. Here's the thing. I don't want you to learn how to let it go. I want you to learn how to replace it. That's what we do. It's not about letting it go and suppressing it and avoiding it. Because see, that's another thing. That's what most of us do. We try to suppress or avoid that feeling. And when we avoid these things, it, it forces us to do things that are even more so toxic to or goes against the vision that we have for our life. Like stay on social media for way too long, right? So when you do that, when you get all those thoughts and things out on paper, it's very freeing. And then for me, I am big on learning how to affirm yourself throughout this process. I told my mentee today, you have to remind yourself, I am worthy of love. I am worthy of consideration and respect. My worthiness is a non-negotiable. My worthiness is not attached to a job or a person or a thing. My brilliance is not up for negotiation. Okay? Coloring. Coloring is something else that I have embraced over the last two to three years. I've become obsessed with coloring books and coloring pencils. <laughs> okay, I'm serious about finding good quality pencils. In fact, my big sis bought me a whole little carrying case because I probably have a thousand pencils at this point. And so I have coloring books featuring just flowers. I have books of cities of in Paris, New York City, Cairo, Egypt. I have coloring books of people and affirmations and quotes and everything. And so for me, usually I like to color on a Friday or a Saturday morning. I don't know. It's, it helps me to decompress. It really does something for me to just, again, let the waves hit the beach. Okay. And for me, I know someone once told me that, listen, when you're anxious, you're worried about something in the future. When you're depressed, you're worried about something in the past. 
And so coloring, something about that pen to paper and seeing the colors and just creating something, it does something to help me get present, to stop worrying about the past and the future and all those sorts of things. And it just helps to, again, shift my energy and find a peaceful moment. When it comes to buying coloring books and pencils, I support the brand is Entrepreneur's Color 2 by LaToya Nicole. I've purchased several coloring books, her shipping and experiences. I always receive my stuff in three to four days, but I purchased, I've purchased a lot of coloring books and pencils from her. So I will include that in the show notes as well. Another one of my get your mind right techniques in my toolbox is aromatherapy. So I love the scent of lavender. I love the smell of eucalyptus. And even now, as I am recording this podcast, I have my oils burning and they burn every single day, whether I am recording a live workshop or training or doing a podcast or writing a proposal or a pitch, I have my scents in the room. (laughs) Okay. And I have a certain type of scent that I like to turn up to and a certain scent that I like to turn down. (laughs) Some of the brands that I love, uh, Home and Gardens, they have the lavender scent. They also have a eucalyptus lime scent I love. And Bath and Body I love this pillow mist spray that they have, and it's a eucalyptus scent as well. And so I spray my sheets and my pillows with it, and it just puts me at ease. It definitely puts me in a different flow to turn down and then to turn up in the morning. The turn up in the morning is usually lavender and peppermint. Anywho, it's important to have a turn up and a turn down scent in Candia's world, okay? And it's definitely something that you should probably have in your experiences as well, day in and day out. And even for me, my big sister bought me a aromatherapy necklace. (laughs) So when I was allowed to come into the office and do trainings, because my clients still haven't transitioned back to the office, but when I was conducting trainings inside the office, I would wear my necklace and has a little space within the necklace. And I dip the soft part of the necklace into my lavender oils and I smell it and it definitely uplifts my mood. The next thing in my toolbox is coaching and therapy. I'm always asked, what are your best investments as an entrepreneur? And hands down, it's coaching and therapy, not tools, (laughs) not techniques, coaching and therapy. And sometimes if I'm having a kind of crazy week where I'm all over the place, I will send my coach and my clients will send me, I, I, I advise my clients also to send me an email and say, Hey, can you put this on your agenda? We need to talk about this week. <laughs> Listen, people, you cannot level up in isolation. The right people, the right coaches, the right community can help you see outside of yourself, can help you reach your untapped potential. Okay. So coaching, therapy, a community, this is what you need to get your mind right. Another thing is to listen to some of my favorite podcasts or music. So right about now, I am loving everything Tony Jones. If you've been around the Candy Conversations podcast for some time, you know I interviewed Tony Jones. She's an affirmation musician. And her recent album, Affirmations for the Grown-Ass Woman, I love starting my day, particularly before I start a workshop or when I'm planning my to-do list on Friday or Sunday, I listen to some of the songs from that album, particularly the one song is Worth Ethic. I love Worth Ethic. Sanctuary is another one of my favorite songs. And of course, you know, I'm going to link that. You know what? I believe I'm just going to share a whole playlist with y'all because whether it's using or listening to music to get my mind right and to shift my energy or even listening to music before I speak, it is a key part of my get your mind right (laughs) toolbox. So I'm going to share a playlist in the show notes. But Tony Jones for me, and worth ethic. It really helps me to set the mood when I am writing my to-do list. There are certain 
lyrics or statements that she makes throughout work worth ethic that really helps to center me. So one of the things that she says is, my weekends are not a retreat for my weekdays. She says, RIP anxiety. And it really just helps shift the mood. It really also helps me look at my to-do list like, what are we doing? What are you doing here? Are you being unrealistic with this? So just hearing some of those lyrics from that song, Worth Ethic, helps me to plan and also embrace just the brilliance of Candia without it being tied to a task or a certain accomplishment, okay? So the next tip or the next technique that I have in my toolbox is a gratitude jar. So years ago, I received another gift from my big sis. She gives the best gifts, by the way. But I received a, it was a flower plant. And it was in this glass jar. And the flower plant was beautiful. In fact, though, it was the plant that grew really fast. And it never died because it's a flower plant. So it's not supposed to live forever. And so it was a little creepy at first. And I started calling it the Little Shop of Horrors plant. If you remember that movie or Google it and get your mind right. If you remember that movie, you remember how scary that plant It used to talk and it turned into a monster and all those sorts of things. But anywho... I reused the jar and made the glass jar into a gratitude jar. And so the gratitude jar includes affirmations on index cards, as well as some quotes. It includes things that I am thankful for, simple things that I'm thankful for. And so sometimes when I'm feeling a certain sort of way, I dig into my gratitude jar just to remind myself of the beauty of the situation at the moment. And that's another thing. Get into gratitude. Sometimes I ask myself or I complete the sentence, the beauty of the situation is, the beauty of the situation is. And I say that over and over and over again until I find one thing to be grateful for, then two things to be grateful for. Okay. Again, it just helps me to get present. Okay. Now, The next thing in my toolbox is a trip to the beach. So the beach is my happy place. I don't care if it is 20 degrees. I don't care if it is raining outside. I feel like when I go to the beach, I can take my problems away to God and throw them in the water and leave them there. (laughs) Find your happy place is what I'm saying. Maybe it's the park. Find your happy place. So I let loose at the beach. I walk along the shoreline and I just have a conversation with God about some of the things that I'm feeling, the things that I am overwhelmed with right now. Some of my fears, some of my insecurities. I just let loose and have this long conversation. And then I stand at the shoreline and I wait for the biggest wave to come in. And I feel like I just get present and throw my those fears and securities and challenges out in the ocean. And I leave them there for that big wave to take it back to the good Lord. (laughs) So it just does something for me. And it really helps me release my problems and challenges there. And I go back to my, my house with just a renewed sense of being. Another one of my favorite things in my toolbox is journaling. My thoughts. And also looking at my journal to revisit my whys, to revisit this one powerful question that I want you to ask yourself as well. Who am I uninterrupted? Who am I uninterrupted? Who are you without your challenges, without your struggles, without your insecurities, without people telling you you're not good enough? Who would you become if none of those things existed? When you could answer that question honestly, freely, and clearly, I want you to use or access your toolbox and revisit who you are uninterrupted. So sometimes I write in my journal, I visualize the things that I want to experience in my home, in my relationships, in my intimate relationships. I revisit the ways I want to be loved and the ways that I want to be considered in my business and my friendship. I ask myself, why am I doing this? 
Am I on my mission? So just reflecting and again, revisiting who you are uninterrupted. Who would you become? See, that's another thing. Sometimes you got to unbecome before you could become. Evolving takes time. You have to unbecome before you can become, and it's okay. Another powerful thing that we often overlook is that no matter what your role is right now, no matter who you are right now, you have the power to still change someone else's life through mentorship. Sometimes being of service, helping others, whether that's sharing your story or just giving advice about how you became unstuck two years ago, can uplift your own spirits. For me, during one of the worst times in my life was when I was feeling stuck and unfulfilled at a job. And my alma mater, shout out to Delaware State University, Dr. Taylor, she was my professor when I was in undergrad. And she invited me to the school to speak. And later on, I became a mentor of several amazing students. They're like way overgrown now. And they still refer to me as their mentor. But I love it. I'm also a mentor to women at the James Beard Foundation. They've asked me to mentor. And so sometimes stepping into the role of a mentor and helping other people navigate their challenges and just sharing your experiences and your lessons learned could also help to uplift your spirit as well. Another pleasant surprise in my self-care toolbox is gardening. If you've been around Candy Conversations, you know I'm a proud gardening mama. If you've ever participated in one of my workshops, you've probably heard me introduce myself as Candia. I'm an auntie. I'm an educator, but I'm also a gardening mama. Yes, God. Thanks to the quarantine, I'm a gardening mama of tomatoes and squash and cucumbers and carrots and sweet potatoes. There is something so therapeutic about gardening. And I've also seen a few articles about the benefits of gardening to people who struggle with depression and anxiety. And so creating a space for yourself outside. And even if you don't have an outdoor space, I've seen several articles about people, you know, who live in New York City apartments and they have, you know, plants and they have created like little spaces in their kitchen to produce certain herbs and tomatoes and things of that sort. Okay, so there are a gazillion different articles. Go to Google and get your life. It's even allowed me to meet other gardening mamas online. And there's something so therapeutic about putting my hands in the dirt, about watering the soil, just going outside every single day. Like, did something grow yet? Are my tomatoes cropping up yet? The anticipation of it all is so exciting. It's also a constant reminder that things take time. It's a constant reminder that each of your goals need to be nurtured differently. Some need more sunlight than others. Some need more water than others. And oftentimes when we are looking at our goals, we have this timeline, right? And we're approaching each of our goals the very same way when we need to approach them differently. So gardening reminds me of that, just to tend to them differently and nurture them as well. And you're going to have to figure out what needs more water, what needs more nurturing, and that sort of thing. Speaking of gardening, there's also something very therapeutic about eating food that you've grown in your garden. It's so freaking exciting to me. But I've also been pleasantly surprised about mood food. That's a real phrase, y'all. Mood food. Google it. So mood food is just eating foods that shift your mood. Ten years ago, I would have been like, what you talking about? Give me a burger, a pizza, and meet me at the happy hour. (laughs) That's going to shift my mood. Now, listen, okay? I still would probably say, give me a pizza, and let's go to the happy hour, okay? But a little happy hour ain't never hurt nobody. But anywho, berries are a part of mood foods. So strawberries, I eat about a cup of strawberries, blueberries, and blackberries every single day. I mix them with this amazing coconut granola mix that I buy from Aldi. 
and also some Greek yogurt. That is my everyday staple. Sometimes on the weekends, I allow myself to have some pancakes or something. But every single day, anyone in my family will tell you that Candida eats granola, berries, and yogurt every single day. Another uh, mood food, or I should say mood drink for me, is ginger tea. Gin, if there's a ginger tea latte that I love. The brand is Gold Keely Honey Ginger Latte Mix. That's the name. And I mix it with my almond milk. And it is so divine, y'all. I usually drink it midday, though, when my energy is starting to shift. Now, listen, I am no doctor, of course, but it definitely helps me. And you know what? There's science behind the fact that berries provide increased blood flow to key areas of the brain. So beyond the heart health stuff, it also can help to shift your mood. Two years ago, I also started to invite more vitamins into my daily regimen, and that has been helpful. So for me, vitamin C, B12, vitamin D, getting in your omega-3s, very helpful. So I get mine in through salmon steak. Listen, the way... To Candia's heart is a salmon steak. <laughs> Seriously, eating certain types of food and herbs could definitely help to shift your energy. I would say find what works for you, but recognize that it's not an overnight process. It has to be a part of a routine. Oh, and the people say dark chocolate is another mood food. My favorite that I keep in the toolbox or the refrigerator, I should say, is Giardelli Intense Dark Chocolate Bar, but it has sea salt and roasted almonds. I love almonds, by the way, too. But it's a sea salt uh, soiree. It's a bar. I believe they have the, the little individual candies, but I like the, the chocolate bar. One bar could last me about six weeks because I usually have like a little piece of it and that's it. So, ultimately, instead of a burger, I mean, a little burger ain't hurt nobody. Instead of <laughs> excessive alcohol consumption, I mean, again, a little private, little happy hour ain't never hurt nobody. But instead of all those bad things, try some mood food to boost your spirits, okay? And also recognize that the mood food could not only boost your spirits, it also helps your overall health, okay? Another key tip in my toolbox is hugging. When is the last time you hugged yourself? Y'all thought I was going to say hug somebody else. That's good too. But I want you to learn how to hug on yourself. When is the last time you hugged yourself? Seriously. And told yourself, I'm proud of you. We often talk about how proud we are of other people. When is the last time you said your name out loud and said to yourself, I'm proud of you. Candia, I'm proud of you. I want you to get in the habit of acknowledging some of the things that you are proud of, some of the little things. Appreciate your small wins. Appreciate your shifts in perspectives. Appreciate some of the things that you have unlearned. Tell yourself how proud you are. I remember last year, I asked my group to tell me some things that they were proud of. And... I mean, listen, I deal with rock stars, okay? So these women are amazing, regardless of their job or their role. They're amazing, okay? I only deal with widows, okay? Even if they don't think so at first. And I was amazed that, or I would say I was hurt, that when I asked them to list the things that they were proud of, they struggled. They struggled. They didn't really understand or fully embrace who they were without the title of mom, who they were without the title that they was that was given to them at work, they struggled. And so I want you to get in the habit of hugging on yourself and telling yourself or acknowledging your achievements, which are not tied to a title or a role. You've got to love on yourself before the world can love on you. Another thing, tip in the toolbox, is adjusting or adapting limits 
for your computer or your cell phone. Sometimes when we allow our minds to wander on social media or we're emailing, it's also a sign that you are trying to avoid or suppress your feelings. And we often do that by jumping on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. Sooner or later, you're down the rabbit hole of comparison. You're down the rabbit hole of somebody else's business. You're down the rabbit hole of cheering everybody else on but yourself. And at the end of the day, you always come back to yourself. And remember what I said to you earlier. You can't run from yourself, baby. So you have to learn how to acknowledge and address your feelings and emotions. And sometimes you just got to sit in it, party people. Again, your problem isn't that you're having the thoughts or the problems. Your problem is you're trying to avoid or suppress it. Sit in it. Allow yourself to feel the way you're going to feel. Allow yourself to really get clear on some of the limiting thoughts that you're having and figure out how could you identify and own better thoughts that turn into actions and better habits that can help you get closer to the vision you have for your life. And that starts by limiting your uh, consumption of information online and just focus on the business of you. Even learning how to breathe better. That's another thing in the toolbox. So earlier I talked about the pause, breathe, question, reframe, and decide, my show up anyway framework. Just learning how to breathe better is key. A few months ago, I was with my mom and she was, well, her physical therapist told her a breathing technique and I loved it. He said, smell the roses, blow out the candles. And I said, oh, I'm going to have to steal that. So smell the roses is, you know, in an inhale and then blow out the candles is an exhale in breathing. Okay. Breathing can surprisingly help you shift your energy. You see, often the biggest mistake that we make is that we have a thought and again, we go right into decision mode. And next thing you know, you're in an argument. You quit your job haphazardly. <laughs> you done got into an argument with someone because you didn't give yourself enough time to pause and breathe. So I love that simple breathing technique because simply by pausing, and smelling the roses and blowing out the candles, right? You can do that two to three times. And it should allow you to mentally detach from the situation. Think about for a quick second, is this worth my energy? That small process can take you through a series of questions that allow you to separate feelings from facts. I always tell people, protect your magic. Everyone doesn't deserve access to your mind, your body, or your spirit. So learning how to pause and breathe can help you serve the person you want to become three years from now. You have to constantly keep that vision in mind. This is not about who I am today. I'm doing this for the person I want to become two years from now or three years from now. Your, your power lies in what you choose to believe. Your power lies in what you choose to do. We spend so much time beating ourselves up over our feelings and our emotions and whatever we are growing through. And I'm very intentional about understanding that I can feel this, but I don't have to own it. You have to allow yourself an opportunity to dig into your toolbox, to embrace your warrior spirit. I ain't going down without a fight. I ain't going down without a fight means I'm not going to succumb to these emotions. Which one of these techniques or tools I'm, are going to work for me today? And if you say to me, Candia, I tried these things. I've tried these four things and it's still not working. That means it's time to call for some help, some coaching, some therapy. Right? Again, sometimes how you see yourself is different than how you are perceived. So you have to call in for some help and some support. And if that means you have to take a break, if that means you have to go to the bathroom and cry your little eyes out, then do so. But then I want you to get back into the reality of the situation 
And the reality of the situation is you can access your toolbox, whatever that looks like for you. Tap into your toolbox. The same exercises and techniques you would be committed to, to lose those 10 to 20 pounds, is the same strategy that you need to use to tackle your negative or limiting beliefs about what's possible for your future or what's possible for the now. The bottom line is showing up means showing up for you before you show up for other people. It means embracing your power of pause. Remember, a pause could be five seconds, five days, or 15 days. Take what you need. So listen, party people. My career confidence and visibility program is now open for enrollment. I am going to include that link for you in the show notes. I'd love for you to email me, hello at candiajohnson.com, or give me a shout out on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, whatever your social media drug of choice is, and share with me your best parts of this episode, as well as any toolbox that you created, even if it just includes three things. You're going to say, Candy, I'm going to start my toolbox, my self-care toolbox, my get your mind right toolbox. I am going to include these things in my toolbox. Please share them with me. I'd love to hear them. Thank you for listening.